there's so much in the recovery college that I think everybody should experience it. This is something that isn't available everywhere. I mean, you can walk in off the street and they're going to welcome you in. Everybody's the same that walks through that door. What recovery college means to me is hope. It means uh, motivation and something to look forward to and an extra set of tools to carry through, carry me through the day. For me, if I think about recovery college in its truest sense, like it's, I get to choose the courses that are important to me. I get to choose how much or how little I participate. I get to choose what I want from my life. Recovery colleges and wellbeing learning centers. Um, the exciting part about CMHA's involvement in this service delivery innovation and this sort of program innovation, both on the ground um, in the bricks and mortar colleges that we currently have and in the virtual recovery college that we're developing nationally, is looking at how it is so the intersectionality of the values and the real principles that um, are across both what CMHA is all about, um, what peer support is grounded in, um, what really community mental health is all about. So these things are actually all integrating together. And as we build a, an, both an e-mental health strategy and a, a recovery college, well-being learning center, uh, service delivery strategy, it's exciting to see that the overlap, if you were to take the Venn diagram and, and line all these up, there's so much um, intersectionality around um, what's really most important about CMHA and, and really owning the community development aspects of, of what's possible with recovery colleges and well-being learning centers and supporting the, the, the values of people with lived experience and peer support and, and community mental health. That is really what CMHA is all about uh, in all the communities that we currently operate. What I want the public to understand about recovery colleges is that it's, they are about hope and they inspire hope because they do not see the person who's experiencing a mental health condition or illness as a bundle of deficits. We have a strong peer support program developed within the province of New Brunswick, but we want to move that even further. Right now, our peer support is based more around uh, the formal system and we want to move it to community-based as well. So we're moving through that process within our province. But we also want to look at a recovery college in Atlantic Canada. And I think that can have a real impact uh, for people's recovery journey. In recognition of the Truth and Reconciliation Commission of Canada's calls to action, the Canadian Mental Health Association is acknowledging those calls and are really looking to provide Indigenous content for First Nations participants that are accessing our resources. So right now we're at a pivotal moment, especially in regards to the Recovery College, in developing First Nations mental health and wellness programming by First Nations for First Nations. The interesting thing about that is that we have an opportunity now to really develop relationships with First Nations uh, communities, with First Nations organizations and its members um, in hopes of becoming allies in the development of mental health and wellness programming. So that having a mental health diagnosis doesn't mean my life's over. It doesn't mean I can't do anything that anyone else can do. But sometimes I get so caught up in what people tell me about it I don't realise that. So I think peer support, like Recovery College, those kind of concepts allow me to re-engage with me and get that I have the skills in here, I just need to let them out. I don't believe uh, Recovery College is for everybody. I believe it's for um, people who just want to increase their awareness, um, like the idea of what the courses have to offer them. I believe it offers um, a place to connect with people who need that connection right now in their recovery. Um, I believe every person can benefit from Recovery College. When I started with the Recovery College, we all started as strangers. Everybody has their different struggles. Everybody reacts to things differently. It was a quiet, very quiet class. It didn't take long for people to open up and share their stories and 
be the support that everybody else needed. There was such a positive change in everybody, even within a couple classes. You know, people were coming in and they were hugging and saying hi and sharing stories with each other. I think when you have a room full of people that have similar lived experiences, it makes you more comfortable to know that we are not the only ones. This isn't as uncommon as people think it is. It's just never talked about. It's not talked about enough. And if all those people that join the Recovery College could take the skills and the tools that they've obtained through the Recovery College and teach it to the younger generations, stigma won't be a thing. We're making it a thing. It doesn't have to be that way. We have the power to change it. And when you can bring people together from different walks of life, different experiences, uh, different points along the recovery journey, something really amazing happens. We connect with each other and we start to break down um, misconceptions. We start to connect that we're all kind of probably, you know, um, we have more in common than we have more that's, that's different or or um, apart. And so when you bring people together to learn and to grow, the, the, the powerful connection and the mutual support, uh, whether you've been on a journey of recovery from uh, struggles with depression or anxiety, or you're, you're recovering from the death of a loved one, um, or you are just trying to pick up the pieces after having a job loss or change. Whatever that is, there is those points of connection and um, what we want to do is create opportunities for people to come together and through that process, through that direct contact, we see stigma and issues related to stigma um, and discrimination really starting to come down. I just, I totally believe in, like I said, the philosophy of what of what the Recovery College means, right? And so it's all about uh, educating and it's all about hope and it's all about um, people learning from each other, people with lived experience uh, learning to recover and get well and less about mental illness and more about mental wellness. So I really wanted to uh, teach courses that didn't just talk solely about mental illness but about mental wellness for everyone and so it was just an opportunity to, ha to bring a voice to um, everybody's mental wellness because we need to take care of it every single one of us each day. I say that my classmates in the recovery college are now they're my family that's what they have become. We've spent so much time so much personal stories uh, we go for coffee you know we see each other on the street we stop you don't avoid so there everything about the experience was so positive for me. I, if somebody were to ask me if I had a negative, I wouldn't be able to think of one. I would say just do it, just walk through the doors, register, take that breath and that step and go for it. Because it is worth it. It's one of the best things that I've ever done for myself in my life. I get most excited when I'm talking about recovery colleges and well-being learning centers and how CMHA can, can help lead system transformation using this model of service delivery that uh, we've started to in three uh, CMHAs currently uh, and several more in development and I think based on the interest and I think what we're hearing from community is that we'll have many more in the coming years uh, as we, we look to meet the needs of, of Canadian communities from coast to coast to coast.